you know what's fun? Making pasta. It's a dish that's more about the feel of things and actually measuring things out. You get your hands and your mitts. And so today I'm gonna to teach you how to make some good old pasta by hand while also making two simple but delicious sauce recipes to go along with that pasta. So come along, let's get rocking. If you smell oh, what for rock is cooking. First thing we're going to do is pour out a whole bunch of flour onto our work surface. Then go ahead and take your hand, create a little well, granny style, nice and deep black, because we're going to be adding a few things. First, go ahead and add three eggs, a big old glug of olive oil, a pinch of salt, and then we're going to take a finger. No, no! Put that down. Use your fingers. Like I said, this is something that you feel with, so go ahead and mix it around and incorporate the flour as you do so. Once the dough gets a little too sticky for your hands, go ahead and grab your dough scraper and get yourself to work. Keep working, keep kneading, keep going until you get to the right texture. You'll know you're done when you can press your finger into the dough and have it bounce back just a little bit. Next, grab some plastic wrap. Wrap it up tightly, giving it a little spin -a and leave it at room temperature for at least 20 minutes to help the gluten relax. After 10 minutes, go ahead and check to see if it's ready. Just double check it. Yeah! Next, flour your work surface, flour your rolling pin, heck, flour yourself. Cut your dough into quarters and start shaping it into a rectangle so we can start rolling it on out. Then we're going to start laminating this pasta. Make sure to do this at least twice to make sure your pasta is nice and toothsome. Next, swing your crank around because it's time to get cranking on some work. Make sure your pasta machine is on the widest setting so we can start pulling that baby on through. Keep running your pasta through the machine until you get the thickness you desire. I like it thick. Well, pasta is pretty easy to make, but it does take a lot of time and patience. But baby, you're going to be happy in the end. It's time to give this pasta some balls. Into one inch cubes, cut one pound of chuck roast and two pounds of pork shoulder. Whatever you're using to grind your meat, make sure you put your attachments in the freezer. Place the meat in a Ziploc bag and pop that in the freezer. While your meat's getting all nice and stiff, let's prep what we're putting in those balls. We have shallot, we have flour, thyme, parsley, eggs, garlic, yeah! Cut your garlic, start chopping up your parsley and chopping up that shallot. Crack in your eggs and start mixing those with those mitts of yours. Then start assembling your grinder. Now put it together, piece by piece. Get excited, grab your meat, and start grinding. Oh yeah. Now once you made a big ass pile of meat, glove up, grab your mixture, and mix in. Be gentle, don't want to overbeat your meat. Get it? You crack yourself in a bit of pepper and a good dose of salt. Grab a spoon to help measure the size, because nobody wants misshapen balls. That's never too appetizing. Gently rub those balls around in your hand. Check your balls for lumps. And now you're off to the races. This amount of meat will give you somewhere around 40 to 50 balls. But our balls are looking a little dry. Nobody wants dry balls, so let's get started going on a hard tomato grove. Here we have one teaspoon basil, two teaspoons thyme, two teaspoons of oregano, our balls, two shallots, two 28 ounce cans of San Marzano tomatoes, five cloves of garlic, half a large onion, and four ounces of tomato paste. But most importantly, get excited because this is going to be awesome. Heat some canola oil until shimmering and start adding your balls. Make sure that you're adding just enough canola oil to the pan to coat the entire bottom. There will be plenty of good fat running from the heat, so don't worry. Once you have these bad boys in the pot, start cutting your aromatics. Got your onion, got your shallots, got your garlic, 
baby, let's get at it. Now let's check to see how our balls are doing. Oh, that's a sizzling Sally right there. It's looking good. Go ahead and flip over all those bad boys, but don't forget the most important step. Like, comment, subscribe. Once they're done, remove the balls from the pan. But if they're still sticking to the bottom, they're not quite done yet. Once they're all out, you'll be left with all this beautiful fine at the bottom. Add your aromatics and start mixing them around using the liquid that's in there to scrape up those tasty brown bits. Mm. Put in about two to four ounces of tomato paste. Go ahead and give it a little stir and make sure to scrape up all those little brown bits still at the bottom. Then put, oh, ooh, nice cans. Pour in two 28 ounce cans of whole peeled San Marzano tomatoes. Mix them around and let them stew. Mmm, that's looking mighty fine. However, once it's warmed up, we need to break down those large chunks of tomatoes. Just cut them up with the end of a wooden spoon reduced to a simmer. Then cover them up for two hours, leaving a little opening to let the sauce reduce and become more scrumptious. After two hours, take off the lid, give it a stir, grab your balls, and start putting them in the sauce. Mix them on in, pull up the covers, and let it simmer for one hour. Shh, it's resting. Come on, meatballs, time to wake up, sleepyhead. After it's nap, take off the lid, give it a mix, and now it's time to taste. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, this sauce is absolutely delicious. And here's even my honest reaction after tasting it. Oh, that's good. That's good. It really doesn't need anything else. We could just let it be. So let's add some butter. Give that a little mix of Rooney Roo and let that sit while we prep our basil top. Grab your washed basil and pat it dry with a little paper towel. I've heard plants do well with music, so I decided to play a little piano on them. Go ahead and start ripping your basil. Once your basil is nice and pretty, let's start cooking the pasta. Pour in a good amount of salt into your water and bring it to a boil, then add your pasta. Now freshly made pasta cooks really quickly, so make sure you take it out as soon as it begins to float. Once they're out, heat up some butter in your pan, mix it around, and add your pasta. Give it a little toss to coat the noodles. Now it's time for a meaty masterpiece. Find some pockets of some good sauce to put onto our pasta. 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 Anyway, just give it a little toss or a mix, whatever you want. Now it's time to add your balls for the unsolicited mood chat. Then add a little sauce. As Chef John might say, you are the boss if you add the pasta sauce. Add the basil off screen. Add a little Parmesan, and baby, we are done. Ooh, great job. Ooh, yeah. However, I did say we have two sauces, so let's get working on our Alfredo, shall we? Three tablespoons of unsalted butter, four cloves of garlic, some whole nutmeg will be grating, a few fresh sprigs of thyme, about a quarter cup's worth of parsley, and three tablespoons of flour. But we're missing some things here. What could they be? Oh, I remember. Some Parmesan, and two cups of heavy cream. First, we're going to chop some more parsley. We're going to crush our garlic this time, get it nice and pulverized, as well as pulling our thyme. We're going to start our Alfredo sauce by making ourselves a roux. We're going to add equal parts butter to flour, and in this case, it's going to be three tablespoons each. Now, if this is your first rudio, make sure to mix this around to get rid of that flour smell. You don't want that. Then, stir in your cream little bits at a time. We're getting close to the end. First, add your garlic, and then just a little bit of thyme, or really, I, I guess, I guess add all your thyme. Go ahead. Then, add our Parmesan. Grate it all in, get a nice mound. Then we're gonna add our nutmeg and our parsley. We're gonna mix it all around, give it a taste. Make sure it's thick enough to hold onto the back of the spoon, then go ahead and, oh, God. Oh, that, that's good. Just like we did with the spaghetti, 
Boil your fettuccine until it floats, add some butter to the pan, and pull that pasta into that pan. Give it a little toss and then grab your sauce and then load yourself on up. The man, you have earned it. And that's it. We made pasta by hand. We ground up our own balls and we made an Alfredo sauce that was just an age. But you want to see the final product? Why don't you roll that beautiful?